Good morning, cybersecurity defenders. I am Philip Waters. I am Fidroxide, if you see my handle on the internet. Uh, my brother is the Davo. You can check out his channel. He's selling one euro apartments, oh, sorry, homes in Italy on the Mediterranean. Uh, he's got a lot more content than I do. I'm just trying to uh, reach out a little bit and give some personal thoughts about cybersecurity. Um, Give you a little bit of background. I have a master's in information security. I have several certificates from SANS, including a post baccalaureate in penetration testing. Um, about 10 years in cybersecurity with a large software company that you would totally know if I told you, and you could totally find out if you look it up. Um, but uh, I want to just emphasize I don't work for them anymore, and that um, even for my current employer, these thoughts are my own. This is not for my employment. This is this is uh, my own personal thoughts and do not reflect that of my employer. Um, but I'm getting a little bit bolder now that I don't work for big megacorp um, who, you know, they had some legalese that constrained me from feeling comfortable about saying a lot of things. I am today going to call out one big vendor, that, which is CenturyLink. And so I don't know how that will go, um, whereas they probably can can have this this organization that they really suck in customer support and can get by, but then they have really good lawyers and shut down people like me. Who knows? We'll see. If you if this content disappears, then maybe that's what happened. Um, I'm pretty easy going about all the things because like uh, we're all screwed anyway, right? So um, just wanted to give you some some feedback about uh, want to do a demo that'll that'll come, but a little bit of rant about CenturyLink. Um, first of all, that their service really stinks, especially in my uh, neck of the woods. I have 0.892 megabits per second upload and um, 13 down. Well, that's all I pay for and. I could pay to like double it. And so I get harassed when I call and they're like, oh, yeah, your internet stinks because you could pay for more. And I'm like, look, if I'm going to pay for twice 0.8, like it just doesn't really matter, especially where across the street, they get hundred megabits per second because they have new fiber. Um, I actually got as far as like the high level executive team at um, CenturyLink uh, at Lumen um, that bought them actually. And, and I don't know if this is a coincidence. I'd like to think that I had something to do with it, but um, Lumen has given an announcement that they're divesting some of their, their uh, Southeast uh, business, uh, especially in copper. And I'm thinking that that's kind of the same service that I'm on where, but it, you know, it's like, ah, let's not focus on Montana. We can, we can write that off and no big deal. Right. Uh, but anyway, I think they've decided that, that this fiber is better and that copper is losing money. It's harder to support and it's becoming kind of a black mark. Um, 10 years ago, I used to fight with them pretty hard to, to get my internet better. And they're like, oh, you know, that's coming. Put yourself on the list. After 10 years, when they give you that, feed you that line, you're like, you're not going to change it. And so I was able to get their attention. They said, yeah, for $40,000, you can have fiber like your neighbors. And for a million and a half, like 1.5 mil, your community can, you know, pay for us to bring it in and then you can pay subscription fees besides I'm like, oh, well, at least we know how much it's going to cost. And I did the same thing with Spectrum and a handful of others. But at this point, uh, it's just time for me to change to a di different internet service provider. And in the meantime, um, here's some feedback about where I was. Uh, that's It's really actually kind of bad, right? Um, I'm not going to really worry about the, the speed of service. That's something you can get, you can fix by going to like, like uh, Starlink or, or uh, we have some other options in our neighborhood, I guess, like a global net subsidiary and T-Mobile, even though I'm not sure it works right where, where I'm at because of trees and stuff like that, but it's got to be better than this. But the, the big problem is, is like, like, for example, the other day um, I was really concerned that I was, I was a target of an attack and I'm thinking, well, gosh, you know, um, I've been trying to get them to let me change the actual password of my, my DSL account since I signed up in a different town um, uh, more than uh, 10 years ago. And then I moved to a new home. And even though I moved to my new home, uh, the, I still had the same, same internet password and they wouldn't let me change it. Um, and, and so I was wondering you know, what could somebody do with that password? I don't know DSL enough to know if, if, if they just are stealing, you know, they could just steal my service and use it, or if they could actually intercept, or if they could uh, leverage that in like a, a social engineering attack or, or what, if like, if that's just, you know, unreasonable to really get anything out of it. But then I was wondering, because the other day, my, like everybody else in the neighborhood, their internet was fine. Um, but then my internet 
went out and I could tell that the power was on, the lights were on, um, that, that it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't my modem. Cause they'll tell you, they'll tell you reboot your modem, try upgrading your modem, brand new modem. They convinced me last Christmas because of an issue to go ahead and, and upgrade it. Uh, the power was just fine. Somebody can you know put in the comments if, if I'm wrong about this, but even if I have a power surge at my house, if I got a 12 volt, volt DC block, it should be feeding 12 volts, right? Uh, that's, I mean, and it, supposedly they've got like a, like a playbook that says, hey, look, if customers call in and they say, hey, hey, we have issues with, uh, with DSL and everything else looks right, well, then it must be a power surge because, uh, you know, authentication fails. And how convenient, right? I mean, I mean, what else could it be? It's got to be like try resetting your modem. But I was able to see, right, by with my own little eyeballs on their own uh, console that uh, my, you know, that my internet was was essentially fine that it was up. I had upstream, downstream, it was working. It was just my connection to the actual internet that was broken. And so to try to convince CenturyLink is like, there's nothing I can do. It's not my modem. It's not my power. It's, it's not my, like, like it's you, you know, you fix it. Usually it's just a stall tactic. If you give them enough time, they'll fix it. But I was like, why did this happen? And how do I keep it from happening again? Was it a cyber attack? Am I a target? Those questions they can't answer because um, what I, what, you know, it's like, even though like, Hey, I can see that it's all working. Um, even once upon a time, and maybe you've noticed this by now as, as I've been bouncing around, but once upon a time I said, Hey, CenturyLink, look, my modem is not secure, right? If I go to router, it goes to HTTP router. And if I go to HTTPS router, oh, it's not trusted. Why? Right. Did it, did a hacker come in and change the image? And we'll talk about that um, and, and all of that. Or do they just have their own root certificate that they don't, they don't want the, um, they don't have like the root trust. They did, decided it wasn't worth it to pay for or whatever, right? Um, after going the rounds, a couple of Christmases back with CenturyLink that, um, that this was a problem. They said, well, we've never had it be a problem before. Nobody has ever reported it. I'm like, I'd like to report it. Like, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Well, there you go. Like, why has it never been reported? Because you don't have a path for it to be reported. So I'd like to escalate to your security folks. Sorry, we don't have an escalation path to security folks. Ah, how can you ever, ever fix anything security-wise if there is no path to talk to your security guys? Noodle on that. Right. So, okay. I got done with the, I don't trust my own router. It went and bought a new router upon their advice because they, they couldn't confirm or deny whether or not anybody else is having the problem. Uh, I didn't have friends to check with that had the same old crap that I do. So, so you got a new router, still the same problem. Um, but then I was wondering, I was like, okay, last year, all of us came home and were under constant attack in every way of our lifestyle by foreign adversaries. It's like, is it unreasonable that a foreign adversary has figured out how to attack the identical device that's used by millions of customers from a company that's completely neglectful about security? Is that unreasonable? I, I don't think it is. And I really fear for people that are at home and are doing top secret stuff. I'm interviewed with the Department of Homeland Security a couple of weeks back and their main gripe with me was like, like, how do you know that your home network is secure? We want you to move from Montana elsewhere. And, and I was like, well, I'm not moving. I'd like the job, it would be cool. Um, but, but they're like, ah, well, at least you're aware that there's an issue, but, but it's a scary enough issue. We don't want you working from home. And I get it. Uh, but as I'm thinking about it, it's like, how would you fix something like that? So I've got a diagram here to just kind of piece through this. And this is me on my laptop. Let's say I have a VPN client that goes to some trusted infrastructure. This is, this is usually pretty fine, right? So long as you know that your VPN infrastructure is fine. If I'm going from here to here, at least I know that then I go out to the internet and this link is encrypted. But here's the, here's the rub, right? If I've got an attacker and they're able to attack my DSL router, which has a public IP, it's just a matter of uh, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of methodologies that they could use, like, like, like to launch against me to try to find my IP address, you know, push notification, hijacking that suddenly goes to their server and reports my IP, handful of other things. 
once they are on my router, they can essentially play man in the middle. Like, like, whoa, how could you do that? It's trusted. You'd have to be on the box. Yeah, but how do I know that they're not, right? So, so I've always has this, have this paranoia that, that somebody's on my router, not just my router, but your router, everybody else's router, right? And the Department of Homeland Security people were talking, they're like, yeah, that's what we're worried about too. And so I was like, well, what do you do? And, I, and I'm thinking, okay, I install a firewall here. It doesn't matter because the attacker is injected here and I don't have any control over it. I don't have any control over this link between my ISP and my router. I don't have any way to defend between here and here. I don't have any way to get a hold of their security and say, um, help me, defend me, you know, uh, do some recon and see what's going on in this link right here. And then I don't have any way to get in, right? And so that brings me to kind of my next thing. Um, and again, I don't know how much trouble I get in for this because, okay, I signed terms of agreement with CenturyLink that I'll do this and that and the other thing. And when I log in, it's like, I agree to these things. And some of that has to do with reverse engineering. How much is reverse engineering? How much is supporting myself? Um, um, and am I allowed to do it and just not divulge it? What, what are the boundaries there? I'm not an expert in, right? So individuals like me, there's a there's a very expensive entry point to what are we able to do without getting in a lot of trouble so and and you know individual contributors from around the world the whole like open source idea when you when you block that off then then what kind of trust do you have um in like that 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 all the issues have been taken care of. And I, I would suggest that for somebody like CenturyLink, there's basically none. I, I trust them not at all. Um, not saying that you have to, and I don't mean to like be defaming or whatever. And should any of this be inflammatory, I invite and welcome. If there is a security person at CenturyLink to reach out to me like, oh yeah, you know, we checked all that stuff and this is how we do it, right? Okay, so, um, could an attacker get to my router? Could they possibly have like, like injected into um, my into my router and uh, maybe change the certificate or um, done a, like change the image? So here's another one, right? So if I go to utilities and I go to uh, upgrade firmware, because it's like, okay, let's say I'm paranoid about um my it's like well what happened to my image oh look it says i could upgrade my firmware so i'm going to click download nothing right there's nothing there but some of us are a little bit more clever and we go okay what if i just take off this dot img thing ah there it is right or if i want to go grab another version maybe i could change that um how secure is this website you kind of gotta wonder and could someone inject something in between this HTTP and me? Um, be pretty advanced attack to like 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 intercept this this binary payload and put something in the middle of there, but who knows? Um, and and so I'm thinking, okay, uh, let's at least start with: Can I get to my modem? Right? Can I can I get in? And so I, I went to like, like, can I at least inspect what's going on on the inside? Could I maybe install my own um, intrusion detection? Uh, what, what could I do there? So most modems, most modern hardware uh, will, will give you this uh, um, remote console. And so, hey, I enabled, you know, SSH is like against my better judgment, enabled this SSH re remote console. And and it doesn't let me in. So I go, mm, CenturyLink support, help me out here, right? Um, what can I what can I do? And so uh, I I called them. And I was on the phone again for quite a long period of time. And I, and, and, and they're like, oh, well that should work. Right. Because um, the CenturyLink even has a uh, uh, website of like, here's how to do remote console. Yeah. I'll show you. OK. 
okay, how to set up remote console. It's like, well, that's easy. I know how to do it, but it doesn't work. Why does it not work? Does it work on everybody else's C3000A and it's just me that got attacked? If that's true, please somebody let me know. Um, does it, you know, it's like, it's like, do you have some contract with the FBI? Like they're, I'm under subpoena and I don't know about it, right? Um, I don't know if they let me know that, but, but could you at least tell me that when I went in and I made this change that it should work? And they're like, ah, you know, we've reached the end of the uh, scope of support. And so I was like, wait a minute, what? And they're like, well, our job is to show you where you can fix it. And that's as far as we go. I'm like, well, but you can see with your own eyes that it's not working, right? Like, yeah, but that's the end of the scope of support. Like, wait a minute, you guys told me to buy this modem. This is a modem that you manufacture, you recommend. This is your modem, but this is the end of support. So, so how far can I trust the fact this is supposed to work, that it's not in, somebody has not injected with something? Um, I would like to get on the box and look. I can't. So that brings us to, I guess, a little demo, right? Um, again, in terms of, of, of uh, reverse engineering, um, whether or not I am reverse engineering, we're, we're kind of pushing that envelope. So I wanted to give you just kind of a, kind of a side um, discussion about this bill, the HR 4006, um, the, this uh, right to repair. So there's state rights to repair and then federal right to repair. And then there's executive orders from Biden, if you believe that's worth the paper that's written on. Um, and, you know, for digital electronic equipment, give customers the ability to work on their own stuff, especially if like you're not going to help them work on their stuff, right? So that's part of the reason why this is important. Uh, so log into here. Bear with me. Okay, so I just learned how to do this by clunk clunking around on my own. Um, so the, I was working the other day with a vulnerability about uh, flash friendly file system. And I noticed that somebody just mounted a dot bin in a flash memory. And I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And maybe this. Um, and somebody probably already knows this easy and does this all the time, like embedded systems or whatever. I was like, maybe this binary file that from CenturyLink flash, uh, uh, the CenturyLink image could be mounted and I could go inspect it. Um, what I was looking for, by the way, which I'm not going to find, was um, why couldn't I log in as the user that I gave it? What, you know, is is there an Etsy password? Is there a uh, Etsy shadow file that has... Like, let's say, for example, that either a customer support said, said, okay, we're going to disable this ability for the customer to log in. Or let's say the hacker was able to gain access and said, hey, if he ever changes this, just, just disable that login, but go ahead and re-enable mine, right? Um, because, you know, nmap 198.192.0.0, sorry, 168.0.0.0.1. Um, is going to show me a bunch of ports open. It's going to show me FTP open. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. We got SSH, FTP, HTTP, HTTPS. It's like, wait a minute, what? Oh, that's, see, that's locally. So, um, I, and I could do that remotely and it gives similar output, but not the same. You can see some of these are filtered, but um, yeah, I've got SSH open, but it doesn't let me use my username and password. So, so could some nation state attacker that knows about some vulnerabilities with some things, could they reasonably like be able to uh, fuzz that protocol or do some magic that they know about and, and, and get on the, the device remotely? I think, yes, maybe it's not incredibly likely, but so I wanted to look and see what was in there. And I was like, well, could I, could I mount this? And so um, I've got that file here and I said, okay, what, what is that? It's like, ah, JFFS2. I don't even know what that is. So I was like, okay, how do I mount a JFFS2? And there's this Emac ink that says, oh, here's your bash script that you want to use. 
except for, you know, the size is only 32 meg. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, modify that so that it's twice the size because um, I've got this, where is it at? I've got this file that's 51 meg, so I needed it that big, right? And then I just say, hey, you, go mount this on that. There we go. It's working on it. So it's taking the, the bin image and it's just writing it to a memory mount. And uh, pretty soon it's going to tell me, yeah, that works. And the, the good and the bad is um, if I go here, of course, like if I had been thinking about it, well, I've got an image version and I've got the kernel and that's all I get. So I don't get, um, at least not immediately apparent, I don't get the Etsy shadow file. I don't get the Etsy password file. I, I don't get to see inside the device without doing more magic. Does that mean that a bad guy couldn't see inside the device? I am not yet convinced. Um, but uh, yeah, so just use this content to ask yourself the question whether or not your internet service provider is doing all that they can to help you. And then what can you do is kind of like a, a mitigation besides. So uh, again, on my diagram, it's like, where, where do I put my infrastructure to, 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 to protect against the scenario where the attacker has attacked my ISP on the far side of the ISP where I don't have any access. Say that they have been able to accomplish a man in the middle on the router, they're routing, they, they, they're able to, to duplicate your HTTP traffic. They're able to like um, essentially inject, let, let's say they, they were able to get that root certificate from CenturyLink or that they were able to inject that root certificate in the path of, of that conversation. Um, and that's why it's telling me that it's not trusted, that it's not actually CenturyLink's certificate, it's theirs. Um, let's say that that happened and they actually have access to the router and I don't. How do you, where do you put infrastructure to protect that? So I gather um, from other colleagues that if you get a different router and you can have your DSL password and you know how to make that all work, you can put your router, like a sonic wall or, or something like that, between the ISP wires in your home, and then you can get in and you can see and you can, you can do your own routing and shunting and whatever else, else it is. And that, yeah, you're not going to get a lot of support from CenturyLink because you're going to call and like, hey, what modem are you using? It's like, I'm not using the C3000A. And they're like, well, then we can't support you. Um, that's okay, because you can't support me anyway. And, uh, and I care enough about my security that I'm either going to leave you as a customer or get my own infrastructure, which is a really kind of a painful investment, but is an opportunity for learning and an opportunity to, to, to help set an example to keep our nation safe and more importantly, your family. So um, have any thoughts? Let me know if you, if you see anything here that like, it's like, dude, you've been pwned. Um, show me how to prove it. And then let's, Let's get that information to CenturyLink because this is scary for millions of customers of CenturyLinks. So thank you for taking the time.